Hey everybody, this is TJR, and I've just finished watching the movie Jackie, starring Natalie Portman, uh, directed by Pablo Lorraine, hopefully I've said that name right, and this is a film that I've been wanting to see for a little while. It came out last year in 2016. I've finally gotten around to it. I have to say I was very impressed with this film. I realize, though, that it's probably not for everybody. This film basically kind of put, tries to put us into the headspace of Jackie Kennedy in the days that followed the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. I would say that the good majority of this film takes place a few days after the assassination leading up to the funeral. And then there are some scenes that take place a few weeks later uh, when she is having a counsel with a priest and also when she is being interviewed by a journalist. This film has a very dreamlike quality to it. It is disorienting and for good reason. This is not an easy film to watch. It's, it's a hard to watch film and it should be a hard to watch film. This film, once again, tries to put us in her headspace. And I think it tries to put us in the headspace that any individual might feel who has had to experience the horrific event that she had to experience. And sometimes we, you know, we read about this in history, we see the Zapruder, the Zapruder footage, and we can kind of become desensitized to the horror that this woman had to go through, sitting there in the car with her husband as he's shot in the head. And she has to experience that. And there is a scene closer to the film's ending where we do experience that moment, and it is graphic. And it is not graphic in an exploitative way, but in a very wrenching and horrific way. Um, once again, this film wants us to understand the horrific event that she went through. Um, there is that moment which is in the Zapruder footage where after he is shot and, you know, it, you know, I'm sure you know this already, but he was, you know, shot in the head and she tries to grab the parts of his skull and brains that were blown off and she tries to put them back. And, you know, this is just a very wrenching moment and a very heart-wrenching moment. And just, you know, that moment where basically everything stops making sense and you're just hoping beyond hope that if you just take these pieces of the human head and just put it back, that somehow this can be fixed. And it's just a terribly wrenching scene. Most of us know, of course, that Jackie Kennedy had to deal with this in the public eye and that she dealt with it with a tremendous amount of dignity and grace. This film tries to get into the headspace of how she went through this leading up to those days behind the scenes in her personal life. Natalie Portman's performance is, of course, stellar in this film. Uh, everything kind of rides on her, and she rides it beautifully. I mean, she does an amazing job with this film. There are a number of scenes that take place some weeks later where she is having counsel with a priest, trying to make sense of all this, and trying to understand how any kind of a loving God can allow this to happen. And, and she's asking the same questions that all of us would ask. And that is what I think is so universal about this film. True, it is about someone who led a very um, unique and uh, a unique life that most of us don't live. One in the public eye and one that is a part of history. But how she's going to ask the same questions that any of us would ask. She's gonna deal with the same level of horror that any of us would deal with if we went through this. The film opens some weeks later when she is having a journalist over to do an interview. 
and then the film shifts back and forth, of course, through time. And we've seen films that do this before, but this film does it in a way that few films do. If I were to describe this film, I would call it very dreamlike. Um, there is a very disorienting tone to this film and quality to it that might be unsettling and uncomfortable uh, for some people. Uh, but I found it certainly worth uh, working my way through. This film feels at times like a bad dream, not a nightmare where we're being chased or frightened, but a bad dream where everything is just sort of unsettling and confusing and things just feel hopeless and, and just wrong. And all of this just works very well to what I feel what this filmmaker is trying to convey, which is the very kind of unsettling and lost and uh, horrific feelings that anybody would feel if they were in this situation. And adding to this very dreamlike, unsettling quality to the film is the, uh, the film's musical score, uh, composed by uh, Mika Leve, and hopefully I've, I've said that name right, hopefully I've said her name right, I apologize if I don't. I was extremely impressed with the musical score of this film. This musical score is not what you would expect for this type of, you know, drama bio type of pick. Normally with this type of film, I would expect a much more sweeping orchestral score that would kind of pull on the heartstrings and, you know, be very emotional. Instead, this score has just a tremendously unsettling effect, which only adds to the film's, you know, overall tone. In fact, there's nothing overtly sympathetic about this film. It's not trying to pull on your heartstrings. It doesn't need to. It's not trying to evoke sympathy. It is just simply putting you in the headspace of a woman who has to just deal with this event and you feel as unsettled as she is. You feel as dazed as she must feel. The funeral procession, of course, uh, was broadcast on television and the entire nation watched it. And in the days leading up to that, there were many concerns by the Secret Service about the safety of her and the children and other officials that would be attending, uh, that there could be other assassination attempts. And in the moments where she's talking with the priest and taking counsel with him, she tells him that there was, a, she confesses to him, I should say, that there was a part of her that did hope that maybe someone would just assassinate her, that she would be killed. Uh, she talks about how every night after the assassination, she just wanted to die, and that she halfway hoped that someone would assassinate her so that she could be with her husband. Now, of course, I have just watched this movie and I've done no research to try to, you know, fact check these more personal accountings. I don't know if she ever said this to a priest, uh, but once again, this film is just trying to show what pretty much a lot of people would really feel if they had been through this, you know, after you lose someone like that, that you would feel, have this feeling that I, I've lost my spouse, I've lost the most imp more important person in my life. And I just want to join them now. I don't want to be here anymore. I think that's just a very common feeling. So it, to me, it doesn't seem out of the ordinary that the film might assume that she felt this, even if we don't know if she really did or not. I would say that this film is definitely a step above most, you know, bio docudramas. Uh, this is very much uh, an art film. This is what I would call an art house film in the best sense of the word. And I realize it's not for everybody. Once again, this is a hard film to watch, uh, but then this should be a hard film to watch. The motion picture is rated R uh, for some small language, and of course there's the very graphic sequence uh, which recounts the assassination. And uh, so I realize this is not for everybody. I was very impressed with this film. I was equally impressed with the musical score. And... Um, if you feel you can uh, deal with this type of a film that is difficult to watch, then I highly recommend it. This is TJR. If you've seen this film, I am very interested in reading what you have to say in the comments section. And as always, uh, keep your comments clean 
and keep your comments respectful. I try to keep this channel viewable for all ages, and that includes the comments. And YouTube is screening out comments when they find uh, vulgarities or obscenities used, so please keep your language clean. Thanks, everybody, for watching. If you haven't done this yet, please subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to click the little bell icon for notifications so that you can know when I release new videos. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.